Back Photography here, back with another behind the scenes photography video, this time at the beach with a 35mm lens. This was a super simple photo shoot with only one outfit, one lens, one camera body and absolutely no extra lighting equipment, so all natural light for this photo shoot. This is a super simple photo shoot that you can do yourself and I'm going to be talking through how I took some of these photos, what camera equipment I used, what the settings in camera I used were and then we're going to hop into Photoshop and do some editing as well on some of the final photos from this photo shoot. So if you're going to be shooting a beach photo shoot, one of the things that's really important is to know what the lighting conditions of the beach are at the time that you're shooting. We decided to shoot about an hour before sunset and we were very lucky with the cloud coverage that we had it meant that we had really nice soft light for a long period of time. But if there aren't any clouds at the beach, you're only going to get really nice lighting for about 25 to 30 minutes while the sun is really, really low in the sky because you don't really have anything in the way of the sun from smashing down on you and creating really harsh shadows and bright highlights. And you really want to have soft, beautiful light for your portraits. So either shoot at sunset when there's only 25 to 30 minutes before it goes pitch black or shoot when there's cloud coverage so that the clouds are kind of like a really big softbox diffusing your light. For this photo shoot I used my Sony a7R2 mirrorless camera and my Sigma 35mm f1.4 art lens and I just did a review on this lens on my channel so check that out it'll be in the top right hand corner right now. So let's break down this photo from the photo shoot which I think is one of the best photos from the shoot. Starting with location, we decided to sit Tylisha here on a rock, something that was easy to sit on and be comfortable on because it's really important that your models are nice and comfortable so that their movements and poses look natural and look comfortable. We have the rim light in the background illuminating off her shoulder and that really adds a little bit of depth to the image and a little bit of lighting dimension as well, some texture to her frame and also that light highlights her frame silhouette as well. We are shooting backlit light at the moment and the light is in the back and to the rear and that is so that we can get some nice soft light on the face and also because shooting into the water we didn't really have much choice but to shoot backlit for these photos. We made sure that we weren't shooting directly into the sun so that we can have a nice contrast in the entire image because when you're shooting into a light you're going to lose contrast in your photo and we're going to, in editing, look at how to add contrast back into the photo as well. So here are the camera settings I used for this particular photo. We were shooting at 35mm, at an aperture of f1.4, which is the lowest aperture for this particular lens. We shot at 1 1,000th of a second, which is a very fast shutter speed because it was still very bright outside. And we were shooting at an ISO of 100, which is the native ISO of my Sony a7R2, and so the best ISO to be shooting at for the most detail in a photo. I also really like this photo because of the eye contact that Talisha is giving to the camera and therefore to the viewer. I think that eye contact is really good in portraits because it gives the viewer a connection to what's going on inside the photo. So now that we've looked at a photo in detail, let's have a look at some of the other photos we took on this photo shoot. We stayed mainly at that first location, but when it started getting a little bit darker, we moved on to the top of this rock and took some more photos. So let me know which one is your favorite and I'm going to leave as always a link in the description to all the raw files from this photo shoot. So if you're interested in editing the photos in your own time or editing along with me at the end of this video, go into the description and get to the raw files that way. And if you've made it this far into the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content so far. It really helps me in the YouTube algorithm make this into a full-time job and so I can make as much content for you as possible. So thank you very much for subscribing. So after we took a few photos here, you can really see the sun is starting to set underneath the horizon. And just after golden hour, you actually get something called blue hour in places that are really low to the ground and don't have much in the way of where the sun would be. So the beach is one of those examples where you can get some really interesting 
darker, moodier sort of looks because the sun is really, really, really low in the sky. It's not even on the horizon anymore. So the clouds are nice and blue. Everything's nice and blue and you can get some really moody looking skies and some really deep, dark tones in your photos. So now that we have an overall picture of how this photo shoot was constructed, let's take one of the photos and put it into Photoshop and look at the from start to finish editing process on that photo. So jump into the description and grab that raw file if you haven't already and let's jump into Photoshop and start the editing process. Okay, so here is the photo, and it's interesting that this is actually one of the first photos we took on this photo shoot, because normally when you're shooting, your photos get better as you're shooting, but this one was almost right at the very start, so that is just an interesting thing to think about. So let's boost the entire clarity in this image, and then also uh, have a little bit more exposure just so we can get some nice uh, exposure on the face. And then we're gonna drop the highlights everywhere else just so um, no nothing's blown out and then we're going to add some more contrast into the hair first of all. So I'm going to add some clarity, drop the shadows and then add some contrast as well and just paint that back into the hair because we were shooting um, almost directly into the sun, not quite directly into the sun but the sun was kind of over in this area so we were losing a little bit of contrast from shooting in its general direction. So I'm just going to add a little bit more onto the top as well. Okay, next thing we're going to do is add some into the eyes and just boost the exposure up there a little bit as well and I think that looks about right and then we're going to go back in again after resetting our brush tool and just adding in a bit of shadows as well. So let me know if I should get a new keyboard because I know this one is really loud. And I've had a few people comment saying, well, it's a bit loud, maybe you should get a different keyboard for these videos. And I think that's right. So I might be getting a new keyboard soon. So let me know in the comments if it is a bit too loud. What we're gonna do now is just uh, drop the exposure and the blacks and the clarity and just paint all over the skin um, the way we would like to smooth. Now I've heard that there's a new slider in Photoshop 2020 called the texture slider. And I'm yet to actually use that because I'm still using the 2019 version of Photoshop, but it will be something I'll be trying in the near future. So let me know if you've given that a try and if you've had any success um, editing skin with that instead of the clarity slider, because I've heard from a few people, it's actually quite a good tool. But for now, I'm gonna be using the clarity slider as always, just to do a quick and rough skin smoothing, making sure not to go over any of the areas I'd like to keep um, hard. So the mouth, the eyes, that kind of thing, and anywhere um, on the arms that um, leave the arm and go into another area. So I want to keep the, the silhouettes nice and hard. Okay, so drop that about 20 points and then also just boost the whites up a little bit as well. And I'm going to actually add some exposure to her face right now. So just remove all those and then just boost it up a little bit like so. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into native Photoshop. And I'm just going to remove the bags under the eyes here by using the patch tool, just grabbing them like that in a selection and just dragging over. And we'll do this one over here as well. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is just use the patch tool a little bit to just get rid of any um, little marks on the skin. Now you can go as crazy with this as you like or as quick as you like. I like just doing a rough um, little pass. Just trying to remove any um, distracting marks or anything like that. This is just personal preference. If you're doing something like fashion, you'll be doing a lot of this kind of thing, but um, it's not really necessary for this kind of portrait, but I'll just kind of show you how it, how it works anyway. So just circling an area that you don't like, like so, like any of these little areas, and then just dragging over into an area that's nice and smooth, and you can remove textures that way. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna get rid of this little circle here because it's kind of distracting me. And then we're gonna go filter and liquify and just move over the hair a little bit. Just making the hair look a little bit more thick and full really makes a big difference to these sorts of portraits. And you don't wanna go too crazy with this. You don't wanna make it look unnatural, but just adding a little bit more volume makes a huge difference. And you can do it on the top here as well and a little bit just on the side there as well. 
So one final thing I'm gonna do is go back into camera raw by clicking filter camera raw. I'm just gonna add a little bit more white into that white area there just to kind of accentuate um, where the light is in this photo. Oof, that's way too much. Okay, let me uh, remove that for a second. And uh, we'll try that one one more time. So just boosting up a little bit and just adding in a little bit more light there. And then we'll just add some there as well. So as you can see, all these changes are very subtle. Just little changes make a big difference in the final image. So one final thing we'll do, because we're shooting on a 35 mil and I do like having a lot of blurriness in my photo, I'm just going to make a selection of Tyleesha here. Then we're gonna go select inverse. So now we have an inverse selection. We have everything selected that isn't her, basically. We're gonna go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just add in a pixel and then move the selection over a little bit, do it again, and then move it over one more time and do it again. So we've added three, pixel of, three pixels of blur just to separate her even more from the background. So that is everything we're gonna do for this photo. I really hope that you like it and that you enjoyed editing it along with me. Please let me know in the comments what you think of the final photo and I'm really looking forward to seeing all of your edits on Instagram as well. I'll leave my handle in the description and also Tylisha's handle for Instagram too. So that's everything for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.